interview and job search strategies that work. So you've just graduated from high school. Your future is in front of you. You're like, what I want to do, I want to do these things. Maybe you, you don't want to spend a lot of money going to college. Maybe you don't want to go to college, but you want a job. And your options are very slim, to say the least. Meaning you could work at a factory uh, for the summer months. You could work at a fast food restaurant. You could work at Walmart. And maybe you have the desire to get into the IT industry, but you're just not sure how to do it. And here, here's a solution or here's a strategy to, you, to think about. Joining the, the reserves, the military reserves, or in this case, the joining the uh, U.S. Army Reserves to get an IT job later. So it's a little different than the active duty. So you have, on one hand, you have active duty. On the other hand, you have reserves. So in active duty, you, do, you, you go to AIT or basic training, then you go to AIT. And usually that's, for the IT industry anyway, that could be six months. Uh, to a year, six, let's say six months. And then afterwards, in active duty, it's a four- or six-year commitment. And the the pay rates are accordingly. You work all the time. You get to travel. Uh, you run every day. You do, you know, uh, PT every day for that four years' time. And then slowly but surely, you make the rank of um, E4 or sergeant after your your four-year enlistment usually. So you've met, moved up from, say, E1 to a E5 in, in four years. On the other side, you have the reserve. In the reserve, you still go to basic training. You still go to AIT, Advanced Individualized Training. The same stuff that the other people do, the other uh, active duty do. The difference being is after you go through AIT, now you're assigned to a, a station, a duty state or a duty station local to you could be a couple hours away or whatnot and you do one week in a month so you're you're training one week in a month meaning you put on a uniform you go out to the air force reserve i'm sorry army reserve excuse me the army reserve and you do a mission you uh, might do pt you might do uh, uh, workshops for your skill set you could do a lot of stuff. And it's usually two weeks a year. And so I have one week in a month and the two weeks out a year. The, the, the difference being is, on one hand, full-time, you're limited in your, in your money. You're, you know, you're, you're, every six months, usually you get promoted. Uh, and then on the other hand, the reserve, after you're done with uh, your training, you're a regular, regular person. You don't, you're not full-time active duty. You can go get a full-time job. So the benefit of going reserve is you have the credibility. You have the, the piece of paper, the, the validation. I say piece of paper, meaning when you, when you go through AIT, they give you a, a certificate of achievement or a certificate of um, accomplishment. So that... That enables you to go and, and get a job. Not the piece of paper necessarily, but the, the skills that you have now. And I'm going to go through three jobs um, that you could join, you could do in the, the Army and um, AIT that you could go through. And I'm going to give you the, a resource such as like a, a YouTube link that you can go and, and uh, view it yourself. And I'm going to explain the different certifications that you can get with these three different type of jobs. Okay. Okay. So first one is um, a 25B or 25 Bravo. It's an information technology specialist. So all the every information is in the show notes, in the links to the show notes. If you go to tunein.com and you just search... Um, this podcast name and tune in you'll you'll see all the uh, links for some reason anchor doesn't uh, put up the links nicely so if you go to uh, tune in uh, dot com and just type in the uh, name of the podcast you're going to you'll find the links in the in the show notes 
So a information technology specialist. Um, it maintains a computer system. So here's the title, right? It says the information technology specialist installs, operates, and maintains computer system and local area networks, performs systems administration, and maintains computer and servers within the computing environment and the network environment, performs network administration, installs, configures, and maintains network equipment within the LAN, the local area network, installs, operates, and maintains commercial off-the-shelf equipment, for example, routers, switches, desktops, and laptops computers, provides systems administration to tactical battle command servers, and the tactical operations center provides systems administration and direct support for information dissemination and content staging, performs information assurance, i.e., so that's the cybersecurity stuff, provides the security services and attributes of availability, authentication, confidentiality, integrity, and non-repudiation network operations service desk management, which includes incident and problem processing, change request processing, availability management, and user interface. Assists with the planning, configuration, management, and monitoring of the wide area network. And what that basically means is, in, in general terms, right, you're going to learn, um, you're going to learn about systems, you're going to learn about computers. So Windows servers, probably some Linux servers as well. You're going to learn about Cisco routers, probably some Juniper routers as well. You're going to learn about firewalls, such as uh, FortiGate or Juniper, uh, Sonic Wall, these type of firewalls. You're going to learn about a uh, ticketing ma ticket management si management system such as Remedy or ServiceNow. And you're going to learn about um, how the overall network looks. How do how do I um, how do I look at how do I plan uh, to you know conduct. Um, an audit, a uh, site survey of an, of an environment. How do I do, how do I patch the server? You know, how do I add it to the domain? A lot of Active Directory as well. It doesn't say that, but that's, that's, what, that, that's what that means. So some of the certifications that, that go along with this are the uh, Cisco uh, Network Plus, the, Cis I'm sorry, the CompTIA Network Plus, the um, Cisco CCNA, the CompTIA uh, Security Plus, the ITIL, so it's the um, ITIL, uh, which is like a framework of how to do uh, tasks in a company. And also, the other certification is a, uh, a Microsoft Certified Professional, or a Microsoft Certified Solutions Architect, uh, Associate rather. Uh, as well as the uh, a CCNP, so Cisco Certified Network Professional. So just in there, just in those two, right? So you 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 have two things. You have the school training, you have the credentials, you have the credibility now. Like oh, I've been in the military. You know, you've went and you've got the training. You understand the lingo. Now you walk into a company. You say, you know, I'm a, a reservist. Awesome, fantastic. You're you have instant credibility right away, right away. The other thing is, so some of those certifications that you have, entry level, just in this knowledge, is probably going to be 40000 a year. In entry level, 100% entry level, forty grand a year. And, you know, that, that depends on where you live, really. So you're looking at right away going, let's say you're in high school and you go through the training. Say it's, you know, done with high school. Going to the training, six months later, you get out and you get a job. You can make forty grand right off the bat, right there. Now, obviously, it doesn't stop there. And if you're content with that, great. But if not, there's a there's a chance that you can make a lot more. And usually, the cap on that this type of job is about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Usually, it depends on where you live, but usually one hundred twenty thousand. And um, of course, working from home because there are jobs that do systems administration that work from home, that's usually about 80, 80 to 100,000 uh, working from home 
if you get to a certain level. So some of the type of job titles associated with this, uh, 25 uh, Bravo Information Technology Specialist, are Systems Administration, um, Network Administration, or Network Administrator, System Engineer, you could throw that in as well, um, Network Engineer, you know, really depends on the type of knowledge you have or what type of skills you get because uh, this is a foundational knowledge. What you learn here in the Army is foundational knowledge. Typically, it's going to be 8 to 10, 12 hours a day of training. It's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. And there's a test afterwards. Um, and, and this is, of course, after you've done basic training, which is um, two miles. I think you passed two miles run in so many minutes, and then you passed basic training, and then you other things, you uh, learn how to uh, um, you work as a team, that's another valuable skill that you, you learn, and um, so, yeah. So that's for the 25 Bravo, which is Information Technology Specialist. I've also put in the uh, show notes uh, a link to a YouTube, cha- a YouTube video, it's like five things people shouldn't tell the recruiter. You know, I'll just tell you one. If, you, if you've ever had eczema, don't tell your recruiter you have eczema because they won't, uh, they won't let you go in the military. Uh, if you ever had flat feet and you know it, don't tell them that. And see if you can't um, um, get, get around that somehow, you know, because they won't let you. Everything you tell them you can't do, oh, I can't do this because of, let's say you tell them you... You know, for instance, you you have eczema, right? Don't tell them that because they, they won't let you go in. If you've ever had it um, and you don't have it anymore, just buy the cream before you get to basic or when you're in basic training. Just put it on as, as needed. Of course, there's there are some weight requirements. So if you're, you're a certain weight, uh, they do like a, a body fat. So if you're 300 pounds... And you're five foot two, and you're a male. Most likely, probably you're not going to take you because you're you're pretty overweight. You're way out of their spec. So they have they have a scale um, that they go off of. Uh, what's you know who they they take. The other thing is they your your jobs that you have are based on how well you do in your ASVAB. So I'll put a sh- a link to the the ASVAB. Um, the, the tests that they administer in the military. Moving along to the second career uh, of three that, that I'm, I'm talking about in this one, and that is a uh, 25 Delta or 25D, which is a um, cyber network defender. So a cyber network defender, uh, I'll read it. it says perform the duties associated with the Five computer network defense specialties. For instance, infrastructure support, analyst, incident responder, auditor, and manager. Uh, information assurance technician, uh, or technical rather, levels one through three. Uh, information assurance management, IEM, levels two through three. So functions as required by the skills uh, in accordance with AR 25-2. And the uh, DoD 857001.m, and I'm not sure if uh, I'll just pause brief here with this. If 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 anybody is looking for a government job right now, as a contractor, for instance, you might recognize this 8570. So the 8570 requires that you have a uh, security plus to get a a job uh, on the on the military network. The good thing about this is. Um, they're going to get you that certification while you get there because uh, you, need, you need to have it. So moving on. Um, protects against monitors for performs analysts of response to, to and detects unauthorized activity in the cyberspace domain. That's a, that's a key word now, cyberspace, uh, which includes deployment and administration of the uh, C&D infrastructure or the computer network uh, defense uh, infrastructure, performs deliberate actions 
to monitor information systems or network configurations in response to computer network defense alert or threat information collects data gathered from a variety of computer network defense tools to analyze events and warn of attacks that occur within the environment. So basically what that means is um, it's a not, a not a hacker. You're a person that monitors the network you 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 might do some of the things that uh to i guess uh, thwart off hackers to prevent them from hacking a network so to speak and these are these are really software you learn some of the software for instance like wireshark snort uh those are those are, for example some of the tools you're going to learn you're going to learn how probably to um, get into a server using tools like Hiram's Boot CD um, or ERE Commander. The upside of this this skill set, the Twenty Five Delta Cyber Network Defender, is that that's a hot thing right now. Uh, IA Information Assurance or Cyber Awareness, Cyber uh, Cyber Security, right? Some of the certifications that you get with this MOS, this job, are uh, Certified Ethical Hacker, um, Cisco Certified Network Associate, uh, the Global GIAC, Global Industrial Cyber Security Professional, the um, Certified Linux Administrator, the uh, CompTIA Linux Plus, the Cyber First Cyber Security First Responder, these uh, CompTIA Security Plus. So the range of pay for this, uh, I just remembered a tool that they use. It's called uh, it's called Splunk. So that monitors logs. For instance, somebody, uh, what a company does is they hire like IA people, information assurance people, or cyber security people. And what they're doing is they collect logs from uh they just have logs turned on, and they're monitoring the network all the time, and they collect this data. And then they use tools like Splunk, for instance, that they sift through this, these logs and say, okay, uh, this is an unauthorized uh, entry into our network. Okay, let's, let's find out where it's from. How can we prevent it from the future or in the future? They also use tools like um, uh, intrusion detection, detection systems, and intrusion prevent prevention systems like uh, IP uh, IP cop, IP fire, uh, sonic wall, FortiGate, uh, Cisco ASA, so a Cisco firewall. So the type of jobs that you can e expect to get, or the salary range actually you can expect to get, is quite higher than the normal. You can expect to get the start off probably like at 65 uh, a year, roughly. So that means after the training, you uh, are done with AIT, they can walk into a job making like 65, 68 a year. And that's your that's the first, first job. So going from high school, uh, six months, eight months later, you're in, uh, you're making 65 a year, 68 a year. And it just goes up from there. So that's the second job. And the third one is a 25 in, 25 November, which is a nodal network systems operator maintainer. Okay, so the 25 in November is nodal network systems operator maintainer. And I'll read the description. The nodal network systems operator maintainer supervises, installs, operates, and performs field level maintenance on IP based high-speed electronic nodal systems, which are nothing more than switches or, you know, basically switches or what's oh, the 192s or optical carriers. Could be um, something involved in uh, uh, microwave telemetry. Uh, integrated network controller systems, network management facilities, associated multiplexing uh, and transit case subscriber interface equipment. Communications, security, ComSec devices, and other equipment associated with network nodal operations. Perform network management functions in support of maintaining, troubleshooting, and re-engineering of nodal assets as needed in support of 
operational requirements. So what that means is basically um, you're in the field, you know, basically. So you, uh, if you've ever thought of like a phone company or uh, a network phone company, and you're, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're going out to the field in this particular job skill or what they're, they're doing, what they're talking about. You have these um, cases, uh, mobile subscriber cases, basically. And when uh, you go out to the field, you have to set up communications for the individuals behind you to communicate, and then in front of you as well. So, for instance, like, say, uh, they need to relay information from 20 miles away or 100 miles away. Well, they don't have cell phones in the field in some cases. They do, uh, but they, this is you creating your own environment and network, basically, using this. So in the, in the back, you have an individual commander will pick up their phone, their military phone, it's equivalent, and they make a call through, to the front of the uh, field. So they call that the... Um, they call, it a, they call it a theater, basically, but it's in the front, the very front of the field. And that's something like they need to do something in the front. And you're, you're in the middle, so you're relaying that message. So it could be a combination of satellite or microwave, as well as running a cable, like fiber optic cable to your, 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 in your front. So for instance, you could probably say um, from their phone, in the rear, they pick up their phone, they're calling. There's a cell tower that you're at. You're setting up a cell tower, essentially. You're providing communications for it. In front of you, you're, you're, maybe you have a fiber optic, you have a, a microwave, you have a satellite shot going to the, the front. So maybe it's 100, 100 miles dis, dispersity from, maybe a better analogy would be from you want to call someone in the next town over. Uh, but you need a way to talk to them. You need communication lines. And so what you do in this job is you, you are the mobile uh, cell phone company, mobile internet company that makes that happen. And some of the, some of the hardware that you're dealing with, right, are Cisco routers. They are um, some Alcatel. It might not be Alcatel. It might be Cisco. The big, uh, uh, big fiber optic switches, you could be dealing with some of those. Uh, you could be dealing with uh, um, some storage devices. You could be dealing with some of the uh, satellite communication, microwave communication. You've probably driven down the highway before and the left or the right, and you'll see like this big tower, and it has like a, an antenna on it, and you recognize it as a cell phone tower, or you recognize it as a cell tower. And it has a, a dish in the front pointing somewhere. Well, that's exactly the same thing you'll be doing in this, with regards to this. Except you'll be attached to the dish or the microwave tower on the side. You'll plug up your communications. You'll have the, 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 the generator power, all of that. Now, mind you, you're, if you're in the reserve, you don't do this full time. You just do this one week in a month, two weeks of the year. But if you're active duty... You do this all the time. So for this job, when you get out, it's the same as if you wanted to work for a, uh, a cell phone company or an ISP, Internet Service Provider, like, say, um, uh, Comcast, for instance, or iDirect is a prime example. It's a satellite provider, and what you're doing is you're working there. Let's see, what's the pay like? 50, 55 a year or something like that to start off because of the, the depth of knowledge you have in regards to this. If I were to Google this job, so I would put in like a network operations center, so like a command and control, um, monitoring all the network. So this could be uh, working at, say, an internet service provider that makes sure all the uh, networks are up. And you don't look at the networks, you're more looking at like the, the, the infrastructure. Is the infrastructure happy? Is, is there traffic uh, being passed from A to B? So for instance, 
your job would be in the real world from real world from this would be there are circuits like T1s or T3s or OC192s OC3s like optical carriers uh, a company will buy let's say from let's say Comcast they'll give Comcast money to or AT&T the customer will give them money to put up a link from say one town to this town and they want they want that path they want that link to be 100 meg or a, a, t a gig of, of internet and what your your role is to make sure that's up all the time and it's a it wants to set up it's good but sometimes it does take hiccups and so you 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 might uh, you have tools of course that, that do all this like uh, solar winds does this for you um, and a number of other tools but solar winds comes to mind it's this job in the civilian sector it's more of a planning for uh, something to go down and reacting as needed. It's not all, every day it's a common thing. Uh, another thing that is associated with this is planning for, say, um, it's not listed, but it, I know what it is. It's called uh, disaster recovery. So in the event that one of the uh, links goes down, for instance, a company... Uh, a, a, a company pr buys um, uh, a link from the IS from AT and T, and they say, "Okay, we got to have redundancy." So your job, in you have part of a team, of course. Your job is to make sure that there's a redundant path. Maybe, let's say, for instance, there's a hurricane, unfortunately, that goes in the area, and a company has a data center. Well, they're they're paying for your company's services to make sure they have internet all the time. And your role is to just reroute that traffic somewhere else. You, you might have, um, let's say AT&T and Comcast, two different links, and it's going out two different paths. For instance, it's, um, yeah, so a hurricane unfortunately comes in, takes down a link or a, a fiber line, basically, and then the traffic's routing another another path. Maybe a bridge. Uh, a, a bridge, there's a fire on a bridge. It's a you know, bridge over a lake or something like this. And the fiber is on that is on that bridge, and that gets cut. Well, you have to have another path around maybe another bridge or another path uh, path to get to its destination to provide services for that that end customer out of the three uh, jobs the the one that really has a lot of uh, potential to go even more is got to be the 25 Delta which is a cyber network defender because that's that's what people want right now nowadays they want that they want that type of skill set uh, companies are hiring for that left and right and the what you walk into this you have the skill set you go to AIT you get the skill set you have the credentials because now you're part of the military and you walk into a company and your your competition is less because sure they have a degree and sure they have experience so do you a little bit um, but the fact that you have the, the military uh, does, does carry some weight. And here's something else to think about. The individuals that they go to college and they get the same type of uh, degree, the same type of job you have, but they get a degree in it, let's say. So they go, your, your peers now, they go in and they do four years. In, let's say they go four years in college, let's just say. So they go four years of college, and then they start earning money. Well, you've already done that. And maybe they start at a higher level, let's say. Maybe they start at 100000 after four years. So that means they essentially would have, but and they still have to pay their college loan, essentially. Well, in the reserves or the army and military, you can start right away. It, within a, a year, you can make, for this particular one, like, you know, eighty eighty thousand or so, 
well, more than 80000 a year. And so in four years' time, you could beat the high, high, high end of the spectrum, the high end of the pay scale. And who knows where this, this job is going to take you in the future? Who knows the other skills, skills you're going to learn off of this? So you have those, those years of experience um, because you've been in the service. And you, th- that six months or eight months of, of time that you had to put in is worth it. So I've, I've included a, uh, a link to an ASVAB test online, and you can just look at it. Uh, ASVAB stands for Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. And the ASVAB is the same for every branch, I think. I'm pretty sure that's, that's right. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about a skill, a job that you do not want to get in the military. And that's 11 Bravo. Not that I'm knocking 11 Bravos, infantrymen, but don't do that in the military. Um, you know, it, it's a great, you know, it is what it is. But if your goal is to earn money when you get out, um, and, you know, not that they don't, but try to get a, a tech, you know, your, your objective here is not just to go in and learn, you know, work out and do, your, your objective is to, to go in uh, and to learn something to get a job so you can earn money so you don't have to work. You can eventually work from home or you can eventually just not have to work because you you build up a, a skill set and then you've created content for yourself and now you you haven't necessarily retired but you, you're self-sufficient. Your money makes money essentially. And so you, you, you know, give yourself probably three or four years uh, on on this road, every skill you learn, this skill set, these uh, these skills, these jobs, every time you you learn something new about it, it just enhances your ability, and eventually you're going to get to the point where you can work from home. And then from there, now you can you can uh, you can go and maybe start your your side hustle. You can start getting more skills and, and now your money makes money for you. I hope everybody found value in this uh, podcast. If you, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at uh, Gary McNeely IT, or you can go to my website, GaryMcNeelyIT.com. Both are in the show notes. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.